the official podcast it's back a brand new episode and jackson is chomping at the bit to tell us what's so special about today well nothing special about today uh, apart from discord shitting the bed every two seconds um, not true we all survived the eclipse what are you talking hey, about th- we're still here i was going to i was going to segue into that it, it didn't happen today so i was going to say earlier this week though uh, a once in a lifetime event happened for you guys i was left out of the festivities so why don't you talk about it huh did you guys all you go experience out? the eclipse what do you mean? Do you, do you not know how the eclipse works? <laughs> yeah, but it's, this is the global eclipse. CERN opened that portal to hell. You're part of the planet. <laughs> yeah, no, it was only uh, only North America, right? A slice well, the of effects it. of the eclipse will be felt across the globe for years to come. A little katana slice. Did you all go have a look? Nope. I, I did. did. Why didn't you? Why'd you choose not to? It's like a once in a 50 year event, right? I, I'd rather just look at the pictures. I didn't feel like going outside <laughs> with the glasses on and taking a peek. <laughs> you were asleep, weren't you? What time did it happen in America? Two to three. Uh, yeah, it was at its yeah. peak at three o'clock, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so Kaya, Andrew, are you changed mm. men? No. Oh, uh, it was interesting. It was, yep. I don't know. Yep, that was, I, that I was that my reaction too. I, you know when you look up at the sky and you see the stars and it makes you feel all puny? I kind of had that feeling where I was at the, what did I call it again? The total... Totality. We drove a long fucking time. Yeah, and we had like the total totality of total recall or whatever it's called, where it was complete, like the <laughs> perfect ring. And I looked up and it was so fucking scary looking. <laughs> I actually like crouched down for a moment because I was just fucking in awe of what an ant I am. <laughs> Because it, it is so creepy to actually see, like, celestial bodies. Because you can see it, it's just massive, but it looks like it's just 10 feet away from you, even though you know it isn't. But it still feels like it's about yeah. to come falling down on your head. It's so fucking... I don't know. I was mm. in awe. I don't get how it's, I don't get how it's creepy. It's like, there's nothing demonic or, or creepy about it. No, not it. demonic, it's just... but it's scary. Something like my caveman brain immediately went like, yeah, that's God. Okay, time to worship. Please don't <laughs> crush me. It, I just had a primal response of oh, fuck. I'm nothing to this thing. I could totally I see ancient civilization have... seeing an eclipse and thinking that's God right yeah. there. There he is. He's yeah. finally here. Yeah, I've always understood that too. People. Yeah. I've understood that, but not in the, like, I've understood it back then. Happening then, but like Kai is feeling it right now. <laughs> he's be- made him believe in God, well, and that the end well, times are coming. Knowing, I don't understand that aspect. So I think the last eclipse I ever saw was as a tiny child, when you don't really have the brain capacity to even understand what it is you're looking at. So now, looking as an mm-hmm. adult, it doesn't matter that you know all of the science, and you know there were a lot of people around us with their kids and whatnot explaining the shit as like, oh, you see the orbit of the moon and the blah blah blah, the distance to the sun. And, It's like, yeah, we know all that shit. That doesn't take away from the fact that you suddenly look up and you see something you've never seen before. And it's just so imposing on you that, like, none of the images do it justice is another thing. When you see it in person, maybe it's because I haven't experienced it in person. But so I think think it's really cool. I think it's like a massive, like, uh, community event, like being around everyone and all looking up at the sun and the moon at the same time. It's kind of, it's, it's a cool community vibe thing. But like, just the act of, I don't know, the moon going in front of the sun isn't like, it's not like li- life changing in that sense. It's like pretty understandable for us, at least. It seemed like Maybe for back most people, they didn't days, give yeah. a shit at all. From what I witnessed, I was surprised. Well, no, that's not true. Well, well, maybe around you, but like there were people like flying across the country, right? Yes. People like flying across the country just to see this. Yes, enthusiasts, people who are interested and care. But (laughs) where I was, where it wasn't in the path of totality and you could still see it, people just did not care. Like I went outside with glasses. I looked at it. There was no one looking. I went to Publix. No one cared. (laughs) Like Just, I don't know. Life goes on, you know? People just didn't seem yeah. bothered by I, it. I will say, I will say one of the most annoying things was like reading online people like, uh, make, not making fun of, but like saying it's just an eclipse. This happens all the time and you shouldn't be excited about it and stuff like that. It's like, come on, it's, it's still cool. 
It's like a cosmic event. I think it was so cool. I did see that attitude too much. It was more so just the people that are freaking about freaking out about like the red heifer and the biblical apocalypse, the doomsday, the CERN yeah. portal to hell, that kind of shit. And people were like, no, it's you know, it's just it's an eclipse. We've had this multiple times now. We had one in twenty seventeen too. Mm. And it's just more people just calming that irrational fear of I don't even know ridiculous prophecy and yeah, yeah, was was the 2017 it's one a, only one a partial eclipse or was it a total eclipse? I don't remember. Do I don't fucking know. Either? That's the other thing. They always tell you it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to see this thing, and then it always feels like five years later you have another one. <laughs> I guess they just happen in different places on the earth. Yeah, I, yeah, I different know. places. Yeah. I only saw one big account do the whole. I forget which account it was too, but it has like had several ten thousands of likes saying, "I'd rather watch paint dry than." go out and see the total eclipse or whatever. It's like, I don't know, it's kind of an old shtick. Not even Neil deGrasse Tyson does that anymore. Like, he has been successfully yeah. bullied into silence. I, I'm happy to report that he no longer, <laughs> whenever stuff like this happens, he no longer goes oh, on Twitter I to, to talk about what up. dweebs we all are for enjoying it. Man. He actually kept this, because I checked, I literally checked like 10 minutes after the eclipse. I went on his Twitter to check what the fuck he said about it, and he said nothing. Total silence, That's so... so. Good. Mission complete, everyone. We bullied someone. I wanted to bring up how I felt like classic Neil deGrasse Tyson, where it was just kind of like, yep, that's an eclipse. That's pretty neat. And how every yeah. single time stuff like this would happen, he'd go, actually, this happens pretty regularly. And here's the science to prove why they're not important. Like, blah, blah, blah. But I, yeah, I went like, outside. Just shut up. Let people enjoy it. Yeah. I, well, no, it's fine. Other people can enjoy it. But I'm in the other camp. And there are other people who are going to join me. I went outside. You're in the Neil I put deGrasse on the glasses. Tyson camp? Yeah, I put on the glasses. The ball in the sky was yellow, orange, you know, tinted by the glasses where you wear them. And then I waited and I went outside at three o'clock and I looked at it again and the right half of it was gone. And I went neat. And I moved on with my day and I did it like three more times later in the day. Yeah, and the glasses went, eh. don't do it justice at all. That's the other thing. I, I hate car rides so fucking much, especially if it's like Same. anyone except just my wife because I, I can't, I just, I shrivel up and die inside. But I can see why people traveled so far because when you're inside the actual uh, the area of totality, you can look at it with naked eyes, and that is so different than using the True, stupid I can glasses that. where you can just see like a little orange uh, blob, basically, and nothing else. Like right. everybody was able to just stare at it directly, <laughs> and it's it doesn't hurt or anything. It's not bad for your eyes because it's entirely obscured by the moon. I was going to say, was there anyone like permanently damaged by uh, looking at the sun? Like I'm imagining some guy that didn't know the eclipse was happening. And he just accidentally looks up at it and burns his eyeballs out. I doubt it. How long do you have to look at the eclipse for it to actually do damage? Well, I mean, it's like looking at the sun, brother. It's not like yeah. the eclipse made it worse. It's just the reason why it happens on the eclipse is because people don't get as hurt yeah, they stare when at looking at it. Yeah. If there's a smidge of light coming, you ha immediately, you just instinctively look away. It's just, mm -hmm. there was like a window yeah. of, oh, I don't know, not even 20 seconds, maybe 10 seconds where the moon perfectly obscures the sun. That's the moment where you can look up and you can see it's like very uh, pleasantly. That's totality. Yeah. Immediately, you have mm -hmm. to look away the second, like even a tiny glimmer of sun shines through. You're like, ah, fuck my eyes. <laughs> what I wonder is, because like statistically, uh, one of our friends that was with us like talked about the statistically there had to be someone somewhere in the path of totality who like never even heard of it because they just don't go on the internet yeah. and don't read the news. And they just looked up like, what the fuck is happening? I want to meet that guy. <laughs> <laughs> had a caveman moment. Yeah. He discovered a new god that day. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure if yeah. you went into totality, it is something special. I can imagine that's definitely different, but... You know, for the ninety nine point nine percent of people who didn't and got the glasses to look at it, it's it's whatever. It's fine. It's neat. It's like a party trick, you know. It's like, oh wow, look, the sun's different. Okay. I know there are a lot of things have to align. The fucking thing has to happen, and then you have to be lucky enough to live somewhere <laughs> near within flying distance of the fucking thing at the very yep. least.
you have to be there when it happens in a spot where you can see it and it's unobstructed. Like, it's a trip. If you want to mm-hmm. see totality, you have to plan for it. You have to plan to be there. You have to plan to be there at the right time. You have to blah, blah, blah. And for the vast majority of people, they're not going to do that. They're just maybe going to look at it with the glasses. And from what I saw, most people didn't even look at it. I was I was actually at Publix at 3 o'clock. So I was in a big, crowded parking lot. And I had some glasses. And I was even going to lend people them if they were like, Oh, you looking at the Eclipse? But I looked at it, looked at it for oh, a bit. You were looking to make friends. I was. I was so lonely and desperate, and it was Eclipse party he was, time. You know, he was going to charge them. He was going to, like, charge oh. them. He was looking to start a little oh, style. Like, I like, tickets outside of a concert. Yeah, yeah. I should have charged. Yeah. You're a genius, Jackson. Well, that happened with... Um, they don't even want to look at it for free, though. That, ha- like. that happened with my girlfriend, though. She was at work. She stepped out because they were slow and said, Hey, I'm going to look at the Eclipse. I'm like three or four people outside joined her and she was like, yeah, you can use my glasses. Sure. And they looked at it and it's like, yeah, there's some people who care, but man, everyone I saw just didn't even care. Didn't even bother. Just truly could not be asked to look at this thing. So. Oh, wow. I don't know how dead you have to be inside for you to be walking outside. Yeah, and that's like, a little far. Yeah. I, I actually be in a position to just yeah. like, look at it. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> just look at it. You're yep. there anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly my attitude. I had a pair of glasses. I I was like, I looked at the clock and went, "Oh, it's three. I should just look at the eclipse. Why not?" And like, that's it. Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah, yeah. I get not being like super excited about it or anything, or like coming buckets as soon as you see it. I can but, imagine totality you know, being seems, a much a bigger, fun. better experience. But you know, I was on the east <laughs> coast, so it was just kind of like, "Hey, look at this ball. Now part of it's gone. The end." Woo-hoo. Mm-hmm. Why does the sun hurt when you stare at it? Is there some kind of like it's bright. Are you stupid? <laughs> is it just brightness? Uh, what do you mean? Is it just brightness? No, rays. it's not even just brightness. Yeah, there, yeah. there's so UV many rays. different levels to it. Yeah. Oh, so it's just like overexposure. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of a little like asking why fire hurts your hands. It's like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's no. very, very, very bright. <laughs> Jackson asking the hard hitting questions for the middle schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to just, I used to be able to just stare at the sun for a long time. Uh, I guess maybe I did permanent damage. Yeah, because you were a child. I'm not aware too of you. Stupid yet. to know better. Um, oh, depending if you're lucky <laughs> enough to like catch a good dawn or like, yeah, you can sometimes absolutely just stare at the sun and see how beautiful it is. It's not always a scorching at the top at like noon. Yeah, like, especially if you get it like sunset ish area. Yeah. 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 So when do the UV start and end? Like when 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 is it dangerous? Just midday? Brother, when it hurts your eyes, like when it's really bright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to risk That's it. a good indicator. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you well, a comparison angle, that but... you can take home to the bank, Jackson. A standard light bulb. So lumens is the measurement of how bright something is, right? Lumens. So a standard mm-hmm. light bulb is about 450 lumens, maybe a bit more if you get like a brighter bulb, but let's say 450 for comparison. The sun is 35 octillion lumens. So it's a little bit brighter. Yeah, so. yeah I, well, I know it's brighter than all How many bulb. zeros at the end of that? <laughs> Yeah, I, well, why'd they put it there if it's going to hurt us to look at it? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Are you questioning God? <laughs> yeah, well, it seems stupid that there's this, this thing in the sky that if we look at it, it burns our eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> and no one's questioned this? Did you know, Jackson, me no there's this thing called the ocean, they did and question it's full it. of yummy, yummy water, but if you drink it, you'll <laughs> die. It sucks. Yeah, isn't that weird, Jackson, how, like, you need water to survive, but you can't drink ocean water, which is, like, the most abundant source of water? It's dumb. I mean, you can drink it. No, you can't. You you literally can't. You'll just kill yourself <laughs> faster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, but you can drink it. Like, physically, you can. In the same way, you could also jump down to like a volcano. Jackson would swim in the ocean as a kid and be like, "Oh, why does this water taste so bad? Oh, yuck! I just keep drinking it, though." Oh, uh, well, to be fair, you can tolerate more salt water than you can stare at the sun. 
I would assume. Yeah, it's not like yeah. drinking the so, so, salty seawater is going to kill you or like damage you that much. It's just going to make you more dehydrated. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to live on it for a while, I think, for it to actually kill you. I think if you I don't know how long I, you have to start I mean, you, the sun I think you go crazy. Go blind. You go crazy pretty quickly if you live on a salt water diet. <laughs> like uh, that's what that's what happens with like people trapped at sea and stuff. Yeah. They get desperate enough to yeah. resort to it, and then they actually just go lo- loony. Mm. That makes anyway. sense. Okay, well, I'm sorry you missed out on it, Jack. I, I genuinely wonder how many cavemen there had to be that just, like, ha- how many Shit cavemen had pants. to die looking at the sun. No, just looking at the sun. Just, oh. like, staring at it. And how many blind cavemen existed from staring at the sun until we realized as a species that you can't stare Even at the cavemen sun. have instinct and reflexes they're not gonna stare at the sun if it hurts <laughs> just like they didn't set themselves on fire for fun groob this light hurt eye but i still look <laughs> <laughs> they still have pain response <laughs> that's the sun yeah, god's what if love a, don't like, look away you're rejecting yeah. his love what if they like rationalize it like if i do this thing long enough i get rewarded for it but then it's actually just that takes from, away the vision. Rewarded from what? Like, who's going to reward them? I don't know. From who? It's not a word, yeah. <laughs> you stared at the sun for 10 minutes. You win. Exposure <laughs> therapy. <laughs> I won't let light beat me. <laughs> the Cayman would absolutely. The Cayman absolutely believed that the sun was some kind of god. They had to. It was this all powerful. Well, yeah, that's like, like, yeah, 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 of like, course. So they many cultures. Why would you, you want to stare at the god? You, so you would want to stare at the god, and that rewards you eventually, maybe. No, it hurts. No, that's like, the whole point. Why they like yeah. worship it is there's this glowing bright thing that gives all of that us life, and we at. can't even make eye contact with it. <laughs> yeah. Look how powerful it is. Like that's the boss right there. The sun is very, very often portrayed as an angry and vengeful god because the sun is bright and hurdy. They don't like that. Yeah, they so they should never have worshipped it. They should have as soon as the sun comes up every morning, they should have started screaming and running around <laughs> afraid of the sun in the sky. <laughs> and never make progress as a society ever. Just be perpetually afraid of the sun. <laughs> yeah, Just do you want us to live like day. insects? Don't look at it. Like mole rats or something? Why? <laughs> I prefer the sun. Well, you do now, but back then. After the fiftieth caveman blinding, <laughs> then it would have been a different story. You would have been fearful. No, I'd be more fearful in the dark when the like fucking tigers and whatnot are out to get me, and I can't even True. see them. At least the sun helps. The a sun lot. god giveth, and the sun god taketh. <laughs> Thank you, Ra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but it was cool. I, I mean, uh, it looks cool. I think my next eclipse it is does. in like five years time so it's coming up soon for me as well and i think it actually like the totality section i was looking at the predictions or whatever i think it goes oh. over where i live so that's exciting the next eclipse is anywhere. only in two years nice yeah. what the fuck yeah it's in for the you united states again get fucked suck my balls why does it happen so frequently for you guys that's unfair because this is where god was born so yeah. it wants to shine a light <laughs> on this beautiful country if you miss the it's eclipse pretty big August 12th, 2026 is the next predicted one. So you have another chance. I don't think it's really a prediction. I think they, they, they or actually the know next declaration. Think. More accurate word. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I, also, I saw this meme, not a meme, but somebody reported that in 2045, there's going to be another total eclipse and it's going to go straight through Tampa and Orlando. So you're going to see the most expensive Disney tickets ever released, probably. Oh, you're, oh, you're absolutely correct. Jesus Christ. What would be special about going to so Disney World just to look at the eclipse? Because there are, people, Disney World. there are people alive, Jackson, who think that everything special in life has to happen at Disney World. Their wedding has to be at Disney World. Their birthday has to be at Disney World. Their anniversary has to be at Disney World. There are just people who think that everything's better with Disney. So there will totally be Disney eclipse parties. Yeah. Think of the fact that Andrew just told us people wouldn't even look up during this eclipse. But, you know, a significant chunk of them would look up. They would get weak need if you slap some Star Wars crap on top of it. Like, oh, this is a Death Star. Look we up. should brand $10, the sun. That's such a money-making yeah. opportunity. What do you mean, brand it? 
Put like Star Wars on Branded. it, like Kai is saying. Like slap some stickers yeah. on that bad boy, so when the next eclipse rolls around, <laughs> you get millions of viewers just instantly. But you can't Dude, look at it. The... We've already established this. You can't look at the thing you're branding. Brand the moon. There the you go. moon. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That'd be. Well, we've we've discussed this already. Like turn the moon into like a giant um billboard or something because board. it's yeah. yeah yeah yeah. That is absolutely going to happen eventually. The second yep. these fucking SpaceX rockets get feasible enough, Disney's gonna just land a gigantic glow-in-the-dark fucking neon sign saying Disney Plus subscribe now or something. On the yeah, moon. it's prime That's real estate. And visible. yet, now hang on, hang on. Now, if Disney put a giant glowing neon metal automaton of Buzz Lightyear roaming the moon, I would think that's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I, I would also think that's kind of cool. Yeah. We should make like very intelligent AI by that point, like chat GPT 77 and put it on the moon all alone. <laughs> just one day come and get it. <laughs> just How create this would it be? extremely advanced AI just to torture it and so, teach it loneliness. That's so great. they build chat GPT version 70 and they announce, uh, sorry, it's not a public version. It's only for the moon. We are only putting this version on the moon. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't that be a great test ground to beta test just advanced AI before we let them roam on Earth and give them, like, nuclear capabilities? Just toss them on the moon and give them, like, cars and see what they do with society on the moon. And if they prove themselves to be useful and not malevolent, they can get a, <laughs> earn a ticket to Earth. <laughs> they can hmm. immigrate back to Earth. Yeah, they have to yeah. earn their place amongst us. <laughs> that, seems, uh, that seems like a recipe for disaster. They're going to fucking launch cars from the moon at us, you dick. They're going to somehow fabricate They're going to learn how to pull its gravity towards us and crush us all. Oh, God, don't even remind me of Moonfall. That sounds so <laughs> you, good. Yeah, you got the moonfall. reference. Yeah, that's where oh. I was going. <laughs> that was a pretty advanced reference. Since, since we've, since it all, all roads lead to Moonfall, Andrew, did you know mm. Roland Emmerich is making a new show? <gasps> what is it? Where is it? Where can I watch it? So I haven't watched it yet. We can watch it together if you want. It's called Those About to Die. I don't know anything about it, but man, I want to watch it because of Roland Emmerich. Oh, I totally agree. Holy shit. Oh, it's not out yet. It comes out in July. It seems like it has the guy from uh, Hannibal in it. Oh, it has Anthony. Yeah, Anthony it has Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Well, oh. to be fair, I'm Anthony Hopkins has kind of fallen from grace. He, he was like, he, the last movie he was in was like Transformers. Really? Yeah. Oh. That's sad. Yeah, he was uh, he was in the I don't know which one it was. It was one where five. Optimus Prime is like a medieval knight. Yeah, it was number five. Ugh, that's stinky. It is quite stinky, it but it's Roland Emmerich, so it's gonna be real good. Mm -hmm. The man only makes legendary stuff. Fuck yeah. I don't know about I he makes great disaster movies, but this sounds mm -hmm. like it's just a uh it says Chronicles the World of Gladiators in Ancient Rome. Yeah, but it's Roland Emmerich, so it's probably going to have some kind of stupid fucking twist yep. to it where, like, the gladiators are actually sun people or something, I guess. Like, there's yep. no telling where this can go. They're going to look at the sun during a gladiator fight, and the sun god Apollo is going to ride down on his chariot and be like, you intergalactic warriors, come fight with me, and it'll just turn into something big and stupid, which is what We've we want. We've got work to do in the cosmos. Yeah, Hades is running oh, rampant in the underworld. Series. We have to stop him, and it's like Power Rangers. It'd be amazing. The logo is giving me Game of Thrones vibes, and it's also based off a book as well, it looks like. Hmm. Oh, no, he's basing it off something. Fuck. <laughs> he's been shackled. Well, it's a historical if you're lucky, book. he's one of those guys who's like, no, I didn't read the original. Fuck the original and fuck the fans. And then he just wings it. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. He he's probably is that kind of guy. Like, yes, yeah, so this is based on the book. I never read it, but I thought it'd be super cool if I took it to space. <laughs> <laughs> we totally do that. Oh, it's also got the... Game of Thrones actor in it, the one that played Ramsey. Huh. It That's might just cool. be Game of Thrones. Neat. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted yeah. to put that on your radar, Andrew. Oh, also, Good. the writers of Moonfall have a movie coming out called Tarot. <laughs> Tarot? <laughs> yeah, it's a dog shit looking horror movie. It comes oh, out in no. May. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, How do they keep getting jobs? Shit. I, I don't know. Moonfall was a colossal flop of a hundred million dollars, and yet 
The writers got another job making this dog. It's actually insane movie. how you can keep falling upwards. Like in yep. the um, what was it? The fucking the the latest Spider Woman one. What was that called? It was Madam Web. Woman? Madam Web. Yeah, Madam the writers Web. for that. They've they've put out like nine movies in the last year, and they've all been like enormous flops and fucking shit. Like critically panned. Like yeah, I don't understand the- how they keep finding work. I don't either, but I I thank them for it. They're out of touch. No, they, they probably well, yeah. really like each other's movies. No, 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 that doesn't matter though. You'd you'd look financially like that team that made Madam Web made Dracula Untold, Last Witch Hunter, Gods of Egypt, yep. and Morbius. Gods of yep. Egypt. <laughs> oh, what a good one! Yeah, we saw Morbius. that one in theaters, brother. Yeah. Oh, I, by I the never way, it's not like one. it's not like just before Dracula Untold or whatever they they made like an Oscar worthy movie that was just fantastic. That's all they've done. They've only done yeah. bad movies. Like they've really, only awful done bad movies. So it's like, how do how do people keep giving them money when you know that they're just going to churn out absolute trash? And it doesn't make the, sense because, like, if if the movie if the movie had a good script, it would have been infinitely better. So you would want someone who well, are they pro- are script. they profitable? Is the question though? Because if no, they're they, they're absolute oh, flops. They're yeah, not, they're not. It's not even close. If none of them are profitable, then that's a great question. But some bad movies, like Transformers, is a great example. Those movies aren't the best, but boy, do they make a lot of money every single time. Yeah, like those I yeah. get, but these, yeah. the only explanation is they're just in deep in the Hollywood rot, and so once mm. you're in, you never leave. They just keep using mm-hmm. you for shit. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. It's like they don't even look at the performance of the movies, they just look at, like, your filmography, and they're like, oh, you have made movies, all right? Another no, movie. I don't even think they look one. at your filmography, they just, they heard your name. Like, you went to one of their weirdo fucking parties, oh, and parties. they met you, yeah. so now they use mm. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I all nepotism. See that, yeah. It has to be. Whatever the friendship version of nepotism is. Nepotism. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Nice, you had it right, Jackson. Good work. (laughs) I thought nepotism was only for family. I just found a whole article. I found an entire whole article titled Why Moonfall Bombed at the Box Office and What We Can Learn From It. And it's it's a pages and pages long article that doesn't seem at any point to mention it was a bad movie. <laughs> what do I have to learn from it? <laughs> Hollywood people should read it. I don't care. I have nothing to learn. <laughs> no, what you need to learn as the consumer is that you didn't support it with enough tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, what was his box office? Moonfall only made back like half of its budget, so it was a huge failure, especially with marketing and whatnot. (laughs) Yeah, I don't even think it made close to half. Impressive. Yeah, maybe even a third. I mean, yeah. I I think anyone could have predicted that. Roland Emmerich hasn't made any like, you know, box office hits in the last like 10 years. What was his last? 2012, right? That, the the movie. I don't even think that was him. 2012. It was him, but he had a movie oh. before 2012, or after 2012 as well, I can't remember. Hold on. Oh yeah, the was second Independence, Independence Day. Day. Yeah, yeah. And that was awful Was that well. successful? Oh, was that like a big one? I think it was financially no. successful. The movie was yeah, absolute was. poop, but I think it did well. Okay. Oh my god, yeah, it did. Alright, what else has been- oh wait, Andrew! I was about to say, a big success hey. is Express- now Hold your horses, Jackson. VPN. Because ExpressVPN is pretty much necessary these days on the internet. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like driving a car without insurance. Why would you take that risk? I don't know if you've seen the waves on the internet lately about dead internet theory, but uh, ExpressVPN might be a really, really necessary consideration in the future if everyone is a bot and all the content is fake and everything is just secretly trying to sell you something or maybe do something inscrupulous well why not take the time to protect yourself every time you connect to an unencrypted network such as a cafe a hotel or an airport any hacker on that network can gain access to your data that's going to be passwords your financial details etc and you might be wondering well it doesn't matter i don't really have anything important on my computer well businesses 
and individual hackers make money just selling your data. Because big companies love those analytics. They love that information about you. And hackers can sometimes make up to $1,000 per person selling information on the dark web. So what's ExpressVPN going to do, you ask? Well, it's going to act as insurance. It's going to create a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so no one can take your data. It's also going to let you change your location, which is super, super important about, again, not letting all that fake advertising stuff take your money from you because it's going to let you get each and every piece of content on your streaming platforms of choice. Check out Japanese Netflix for a thousand and one animes you've never seen before. You can check out South Korean Hulu for a thousand and one K dramas you've never seen before. Uh, I think the classic example that I always bring up every time is New Zealand. I think has a perpetual license to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and those films are always worth watching. So give that a go. Uh, we had a host on this show, I won't name names, who required ExpressVPN at a certain point to even do the show due to some countries getting a little, little overzealous with the internet blocking. So just give it a chance. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic product. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash official. That's expressvpn.com slash official. And you can get an extra three months for free. Expressvpn.com slash official. Thank you. Thank you, ExpressVPN. Yes. Charlie, I watched a video that you did uh, earlier this week about songwriting AI or AI that mm -hmm. is able to produce songs. Suno. And that was, yeah. yeah, that was so fucking crazy how close it's getting. Like, it's not even getting close. It's like actually just creating songs that I feel like I could hear on the radio. Yep. Like, there's it's, no disillusionment it is. there. It's at an alarming stage. Like mm -hmm. it is, uh, some of the songs, one hundred percent, you you hear it and you'd be like, "Oh, that's definitely AI," because right. some of them are definitely stinky and you can tell. But a large chunk of them are really tough to tell that they're AI generated. It's very scary. Yeah, it, it it hits way more than it misses. I remember a couple of years ago when AI was first coming on the scene, like the first inklings of chat GPT and whatnot. And there was, I don't know if it's that same website. It might be, but there was a website that said, Hey, AI generated music, check it out, see what it is. And all it would ever do is put building blocks together. It would have like kind of preset four, four time blocks of music yeah. and go, Hey, let's have a fast section here. And then now let's slow it down for variety. And almost all the songs were roughly exactly the same. Cause they were just playing with the same pieces and putting them in different orders. Yeah. That's what it, that's what AI has historically been before these yeah. like language models in the last few years. It was always just like procedural tech basically. Yes. That's really all it was. Exactly it kind of just had preset stuff, yeah. preset instruments and patterns and went, yeah, we can, Whatever. I distinctly remember at one point it uh, tried to get creative and said, we're going to put a, gu a guitar solo in your song. And the guitar played one note and then was just silent for like 32 straight bars of nothing. And it was, it was just <laughs> comical. It was just nothing. But now what you were showing in that video is, oh boy, it's, it's remarkably it realistic. Rapidly. Yeah. But even your years, like you guys remember just a few months ago, people were still laughing at it, going, Yeah, but it can't even do fingers. Ha ha ha. And people warned you. Yeah. It's not gonna yeah. stay that way. It's gonna advance very fast. Better watch out. And no one wants to listen. There's a fantastic video by Marcus Brownlee where he shows a video of a guy sitting in a cloud reading a book. And at first glance, it looks like, oh, it's a guy on a set. It's like stock footage, like, you know, green screen, whatever. And then you look closer. And you go, wait, 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 his fingers are a little too long, and the way things are moving is a little too fluid. But at first glance, it looks completely real. It, it's entirely AI-generated. It has no reference, no, no anything that it spawned from. It's just completely made up. But it looks very, very convincing if you don't stare at it for too long. It, it, we're, we're getting there. That's a lot right. of AI right now. Yeah. It's... it's what sucks is like this technology I could feel being really helpful in a lot of like avenues where it would be appreciated to like get rid of some of like the tedious grunt work. But instead of just being used for creative ventures instead, yep. so replacing like the one thing humans really like to do, which is be creative. It's fucking frustrating. Being used for both. 
And he's being used for both. I agree. But like the biggest advancements that at least I'm seeing is in the creative sector. Yeah. And the, the problem is all they ever really use it for is tech demos just to kind of show it off and be like, look what we did with it. They don't have an idea for it when they utilize it, you know? Yeah, but at this pace, you're going to have like 14 year olds making blockbuster movies in their living rooms, which I really don't mind. It's this is the same thing where initially the first softwares for like music production came out, just regular audio workstations like Cubase and shit or FL Studio and some classical musicians just were a little upset by it. Like, what do you mean any child can now make music? That's how it works. You have to study. But no, it turns out just like any kid can make really fun music, actually. And I hope AI goes that way, especially with all the open models that you can run on your computer now. Um, I don't know how much you guys keep up with that, but I do a lot. Uh, Meta announced that it's releasing Llama 3 probably this next week with the bigger models coming out in the next coming few months. That's an open model. You can download already like very advanced models on your computer where like Charlie hoped for it does the grunt work like removing backgrounds or just cutting a person out of a photo and then you can uh say i have seen like, that hey, give me give me traditional japanese garments or something like that and it does and it's very fun to play around with um so yeah I, you can get them uncensored which is a lot of fun i don't know the landscape is fun it just people are getting really caught off guard despite the year-long warning messages of watch your ass this is gonna come for your job and way too I many mean, people just laughed that? at well, it I mean, and scoffed. You say watch your ass, but like it's inevitable. There's nothing to really. Yeah, there's not like a whole lot you can really do. Even like if you know it's coming, you just won't be surprised by it. But it's still coming no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. I know it is coming no matter what, but it is it is still worse to be caught completely off guard, like shocked to your core. That I guess. This thing that couldn't do draw fingers a couple of months ago is now making fully fledged videos. It's like, yeah, dude, you gotta, you have to like. Pick up different skills or something. Yeah. I don't think, well, no, I, it's going to replace everything. AI is eventually going to replace everything. There's not a single thing yeah. that I could imagine would be untouched by this kind of technology. So the onus isn't on us. It's on, you know, governments to protect us in, in ways, whether that's through like stuff like eventually leading to like UBI or some kind of guarantee that we'll be safe without jobs or uh, things like that. Well, yeah, that would be nice. That would be the nice utopia of, you know, Doug Stanhope had a joke almost like a decade ago going, where's the candidates, the presidential candidate promising us to make all the robots do all the fucking shit so we can just lay back mm-hmm. and live like Wally, the Wally people. So that would be ideal, you know, not the being fat part, but if AI did, took care of all the jobs and we just collect the benefits, but. And there's going to be a transition period and it's going to suck. But in the meantime, it's, there's no point in censoring it or legislating it, you know? It's going to happen either way. Might as well learn it yeah. and use it to your advantage. Yeah, I'm not sure about legislating it. Like, I, I, you can't stop it. But there's got to be some kind of legislation that protects us to some degree or some kind, some kind of governmental, uh, not authority, but some kind of gov- governmental incentive or procedure to start to start curtailing it to some degree um but as as it exists uh, like it existing in general that's never going to stop that's never going to be put back in the bag and i don't think it should either probably no but yeah the tools are, it's it's exciting it's an exciting landscape that now nowadays or at least this year you're going to be able to run models locally that yeah. you would otherwise have to pay OpenAI 20 bucks a month for. The only issue is the computational thing, because I have, I think all of us have pretty good graphics cards, right? I have a 4090. You can run Helldivers 2 on like 4K and 120 FPS easy. Doesn't even make the thing sweat, but if you throw a beefy language model, model at it, it generates like a word every four seconds. You know, it takes a lot of computational power for these fucking things to run which I think that might be the limiting factor. Not every kid is going to have that in their computer. Yeah, but that's where those services come in place as well. Like, you can just log on to Sonu or whatever it is. What Was it Sonu? Suno. Suno. You can just log into Suno and then tinker around and make tracks on that, and you don't have to have computationally... Yeah. uh, You you know, you don't have to have the computational needs necessary to do that. It's just... 
and there's just platforms for it. And that's really cool. I think it is actually cool to just hop on and create a song like that just to tinker around. I don't know about commercializing it or actually using it in, you know, proper ventures and stuff like that, but like just as a hobby, tinkering around with it. I think that shit's really cool. And it's impressive as well at how how accurate it is to music that I would actually hear on the radio, like already. It's insane. And it makes me think that Hollywood's probably already had this tech for like the last 20 years, or the music industry anyway. Mm, yeah, I, I don't know about so that. fucking artificial. I don't know if people are getting all up in arms about this one, like autotune has been used for decades now, and that thing is trained yeah. off of people's voices too. It's just all artificial shit. Again, where do you draw the line? How is this different from like using the uh, fill-in tool in Photoshop to generate pixels, except now you're... It's not just... It's not just fill in though. It does the entire composition for mm-hmm. you based off the prompts. You're not actually doing anything. It's doing all of it, and it's still based off other people's work. No, I know, but again, where do you? How many pixels should be allowed then? Is it okay if I make a selection in Photoshop and just change my eye color? Well, there's like plenty. Many... That's going to be up to the individual. That's not. I don't think it's like yeah. a legislation thing. It'll be like. I don't really like AI music, so I'd prefer if none of these pixels are altered. I want it all human engineered. That kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. Unfortunately, most people aren't like you and me, and they're not going to give a fuck. TikTok and Spotify charts are going to be full of uh, artificial people. Probably like artists that don't even exist. They're just going to AI generate like an OnlyFans thought to be the face of an artist, and then they're just going to make AI songs. And people will pay yeah, for and, it. And, that's, and that fucking sucks. It's already starting <laughs> in some small capacity where you have ads now where they do that like... I don't know how to describe it. It's like a picture, but the face is animated with AI. Just their face. And they say things like... Have you seen the one where it's like these bots that are women? And they're like, hi, if you want someone to talk to, I'm your AI chat oh, companion. Yeah, you can blah, blah. And then you have these other ones where it's like... You see them on Facebook a lot. Where they're men in suits giving like life and financial advice. And shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Great. But the point is, they don't, they don't even need to hire actors or personalities to make this type of content and advertising. They just take the script, slap it in a text-to-speech model, and then put it on one of those animated avatars. And that's it. The work's done. There it is. Yeah. Fully automated Tate University. Or Tate College, whatever the fuck you call it. You can just have these AI agents telling you, yeah, man, slay pussy, buy a Lambo. <laughs> But it's, they're just so unnerving too, though, because they want to be like genuine and wholesome. But it's like this creepy, weirdly moving automaton going, Here's four pieces of advice my father gave me for a successful life. <laughs> and it's like, Oh my God. It's so I know weird. What you're talking about those are so fucking weird. Father you know what else I think has probably been AI generated is those animated mobile game ads. They're so incomprehensible. Yeah. I struggle to think of a real human being being behind it. I was just going to bring it up, but I can't stop watching them. Every time they come up, I watch them all Some the way through. Some of them are amazing. Just such a wild yeah, they, ride. It, they are kind of fun. They, no, I agree. They are kind of fun, but I legitimately can't figure out a human being that to advertise their fucking city building mobile game, they have like some random guy taking another dude, spreading him like a fucking Thanksgiving turkey and rubbing his gooch on a cactus and then throwing him and kicking him to advertise the game. Yep. Like it doesn't even tie in. It's nonsensical. Well, because the bo- the game that they're fucking trying to advertise is boring as shit. It's a mobile game. There's nothing exciting yeah. to actually show. So instead, they go the wacky route of like, what can we do that'll make Jackson continue to watch this at 3 a.m.? And it works, sadly, because I watch the entire fucking duration multiple times sometimes. Yep. Because it's just so fucking the, wild. The games are always just clones of other stuff. It's a Bejeweled clone. It's a City Builder clone. It's an Infinite Runner mm-hmm. clone. It's it's because they don't they, have to do any work on the other, actual yeah. game. So they put all the work into the advertisement to get your attention. Well, the advertisement itself, so even when there's gameplay, I've noticed this trend. I don't know how long it's been a trend for, but with the Instagram mobile ads, like there'll be a game that they're advertising. They show gameplay footage. And then you click on the actual like widget, uh, the advertisement to go download the game. And the game that they advertise is nothing like the game yeah. that you're going to download at all. It's not, even in, it's not mm-hmm. even in there. There's no pictures or anything of it. There's that really famous series of ads. I forget what it's called. Like Grandma's Plant Shop, Grandma's Flower Shop or something. That's the one where it ends with yeah, the yeah. twist where she, Grandma gets arrested and her hand says he's still alive. And out, the internet like flipped the fuck out. They're like, oh my God, this is lore and it's deep. I'm pretty sure that game is a bejeweled clone. 
it's just literally bejeweled except with plant themes yeah yeah it's like it has nothing to do with any of that soap opera shit and they always comp- like copy each other someone will make a new type of advertisement and then every other game company will or mobile game company will copy that and advertise this exact same kind of concept but none of the games are like actually at all like what they're advertising and it's just like well, we clearly, you know, this works on an advertisement level. Why don't you just make the game that and actually get people to enjoy the game <laughs> instead of bejeweled for the 1000th time or, or uh, Cl- Clash of Clans and stuff like that? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. I love them though. There was, a, there was an ad I saw a few weeks ago. It might have been a few months ago where a chick is like, a, a woman is like cycling away from zombies or something and she gives birth to a baby. Oh, yeah. And shoots out the like, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Shoots out the Ew. baby and it's like still attached to the umbilical cord. And the guy character has to jump back and try to grab it and save it. But then I think the baby kills him. <laughs> I'm like, how does, how does this get me? How, like, how do you think of this? Have you seen the opposite one where they make the game look just really, really dumb and terrible, but they put really fun animations to make it better? So the one that I'm thinking of is there's this ad that shows up in different forms where the game is click the lower number. So you have a character and he has like the number three and it's like, okay, do I click on number two or number four? And then they play through it for a bit and there's like fighting and fucking action and shit. And then somehow they lose. It's like, how did you do? That? Oh man, that's uh, that's every single you do game that? ad when they whenever they show whenever <laughs> they show actual gameplay, it's like the most dumb shit ever. I know. Like it's like don't pull the lava into this room, and then the player does it. Yeah, and they, like, can, you they do always better? at the very end of these ads. Every time they lose by being a complete fucking moron, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the other trope is like uh, your character will be level two and get beat up by a gang of trolls or something, and then he levels up to level six hundred and gets revenge. Yeah. That's also the other yeah. theme I noticed in these. Levels up. It's also like you start as a small virgin or whatever, and then you can become a Chad <laughs> by leveling up. They, yep. They, that's not a joke. There's actual like ads like that. The big, another big one, well, at least was big for a while, is the fart ones. Do you remember the fart ones? I do remember the fart ones. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be like no matter what the mobile game is, they just have like random characters farting in each other's faces. So one of the big ones was for a zombie game. And while they're trying to escape zombies, they're being like quiet. And then one of the girls farts and a guy like slaps the shit out of her and she <laughs> farts again. And then the zombies come in. <laughs> I, oh, man. I want someone to do a dissertation on like the trends of mobile game yeah. ads and see. Because I bet I bet when that that little period of time was happening there, Charlie, every single ad was like just it was and stuff like that. For, there was another zombie mobile game ad where. It was a guy doing sit-ups in a gym, and then he farts, and then the zombies bust in, and he's like, oh, no, and he farts again and then <laughs> runs away. That's a common occurrence, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happened. It, it was a huge trend for a while with the yep. farts. There's also the... So there's these little micro-trends, but then then it's still... It's been zombies forever. They have never... Like, these games have never moved on from zombies. It's kind of crazy mm-hmm. to me that, like, mm-hmm. we're still getting zombie mobile game ads. So the yeah. actual you know, all encompassing trend is still the exact same, but then they insert these little micro trends of farting and uh, baby, like birthing babies and stuff like that. Well, it appeals to the same lowest common denominator of like idiots and children who are into the zombie fat still. Yeah. I don't think so because no, it's not making me download the games. It's just making me watch the ads. Like the ads are the entertainment now for me. Yeah, but <laughs> you're not a retarded person. Games. That's completely different. Well, That's, you have to understand that the, <laughs> these ads are not aimed at you, obviously. Well, they're working on me, though. I'm watching the ads. They're working on me to Different some degree. The ads are. Yeah, but I'm saying if they made the games like this, I would probably download them and be like, <laughs> play them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know what the fucking games would be if it was like the fart games. Like, I, I, what do you play? <laughs> I don't know what the ad is. Just do the ad, but in the game, I'd be happy with that. I'd I'd go through fifty rounds of bejeweled as, as long as there's a cutscene at the end of someone fighting. <laughs> oh, so you just want the okay? The gameplay doesn't necessarily need to tie in. You just want these to be like the actual cutscenes. Gotcha. <laughs> Sounds like you just want farts. Yeah. No, I I mean I was just using that as an example. I just meant like the wacky uh-huh. zany ads, just in general. I can do without the farts. Although the farts are cool. Yeah, I'd probably go for the farts. <laughs> just kidding. Unless that's the vibe I'm getting from you right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie was the one that brought up farts, not me. Yeah, I was just talking about trends, though, brother. Mm-hmm. You like farts. 
It's mm. cool. I like the ads. Um, what else has happened this week? Well, speaking of video games, um, did you guys want to discuss the BAFTA's list, list of top 20 video game characters of all time that they voted for? Oh, is that that fucking one that has like Pikachu at number 12? <laughs> well, let's, let's take a look at it. Okay, how about this? I'll read them descending starting at 20 and you guys can give me a yay or nay on if you agree with the ranking. Sure. Of the specific video game character. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. What the fuck is BAFTA anyway? BAFTA, BAFTA? That's one of those like uh, old school uh, acting things, I'm pretty sure. Like, because they have the BAFTA awards <laughs> for like achievements in acting, I think. <laughs> Unless I'm getting them oh, mixed up. So they do video they games. Now, now though, okay. relevant though, they now have a video games category, which is probably why they're mm. doing this. Mm. Okay. Number yeah. 20, Nathan Drake from no. Uncharted. No. What? Yeah, the Uncharted series is massive. Yeah, this is fine. the yeah. most At least iconic the top 20 of all time, and you think Nathan Drake makes the cut? No way. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, no. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no way. Those games are, those games are colossal. 20 is pretty generous. Were, 20, no. no. I, generous? Top 20. Yeah, I would absolutely give Nathan Drake the 20 spot. Who would you sure. put at 20, Andrew? Who would you give the last would, spot to? It would probably be someone already on the list, but I don't know, someone from yeah. maybe Metal Gear, Resident Evil, something like that. They'd be much higher up. Those are much bigger games. I peeked yeah. at the okay, list, and I don't believe Resident Evil's on there at all. Well, yeah, the, the list is absolute dog shit. Yeah. Yeah. Number yeah. 19 is Ellie from The Last of Us. Hmm. It's pretty culturally, yeah. I guess, uh, big in the last maybe. 10 years or so. That one's uh, like a big cup. maybe. I would actually say okay. Ellie probably less than Nathan Drake. I would say Ellie less than Nathan Drake too. I don't like either. Yeah, probably. It's not about you liking them. It's about the iconic, like I like how iconic they are. I think we should make that very clear. It's not about how much you enjoy them as a character. It's like how much they embody video games. Like everyone knows this character. I think that's what iconic yeah. means, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number uh -huh. eighteen is mm -hmm. Kazuma from Yakuza. I so Ki yeah, that, right? Kiryu Kazuma I would put Kiryu. on there, but definitely like number twenty. He should be like d towards the end. So I'd say that's fair. I don't. All right. I love you know I love Kiryu and I love Yakuza. I think Yakuza <laughs> is too niche for this list. I don't yeah, know, man. I, I like how you'd put yeah. Kiryu over Nathan Drake, <laughs> <Because> <laughs> yeah. one of the <laughs> biggest PlayStation top sellers well, of all time. Meanwhile, the Yakuza okay, series has been a high selling franchise for over twenty years, longer than it has, but Uncharted. like not that level. It still is a niche, though. Uncharted is a it was cultural phenomenon. <sighs> I guess. Okay, this uh, next one is fucking stupid to me. Uh, Seventeen Asterion from Baldur's Gate Three. No, absolutely yeah, that's not. Too that's soon. ridiculous. Too soon. Too soon. Yep, way too soon. It just came out. No, yeah. absolutely not. It just came out. Not every. This is very like. I don't Western centric. Like, who the fuck knows Asterion and the rest of the world here? I I think that's the I think that's the problem I have with Nathan Drake. It's too Western focused. I don't think countries in the East give a fuck about the Uncharted series at all. Whereas both the West and the East like Yakuza, for example. But I think Nathan Drake mm, has had way I more games and way more time to yeah. like gestate in the minds of gamers as opposed to Asterion. I think maybe in like 15 years, if Asterion gets multiple like entries into some kind of series or whatever, then yeah, sure. But like Nathan Drake has been here, been here for a long time. I think he, he's earned yeah, that 20 spot. I, Asterion, I, not so much. I, I, yeah, fine. I could, I guess. Yeah. Let's see. Let's continue. So 16 is Cloud from yeah, Final absolutely. Fantasy. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm actually Cloud, fine with that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Deserved. Also, just for what it's okay, worth, Andrew, Uncharted yet. was very popular in Japan as well, apparently. Was it? You have to keep in mind, it's a Sony exclusive, yeah, so it's, Sony it's probably going to do well okay. in Japan, too. Yeah, I mean, so I just looked it up. It sold uh, 40 million units over the franchise, so I'd, I'd say, okay, fine, maybe I'm underestimating it. I'll give you that. I Even if it was Sony, I would be surprised if it was popular in Japan. It just doesn't seem like the kind of game that would go big. In I guess Japan. my problem with it is while the Uncharted series for sure is really big, I don't know how many people really, really like Nathan specifically more than just the actual the franchise. Game. No, he's the, I, I like Nathan Drake. I find him a very charismatic character. Okay. 
he is a good character and for like when these games were in their heyday everyone knew nathan drake look there's there's four out of five dentists agree on that toothpaste yeah i'll be the fifth <laughs> yeah. dentist you know it's, it's okay i will accept that i might have a different that is such opinion. a beautiful That's way okay. of putting that there's nothing yeah, wrong with me cute. thinking a little differently but it's i might be wrong no, it I might be more popular than no. i realize but i just i don't know right. i'm not feeling it i think this one deserves to be here number 15 is crash bandicoot Yes. Yeah. Yes, Definitely. but under the assumption that Spyro is already also in there. If Spy- I think Spyro uh, is better than I'm not well, gonna okay. spoil it. Fuck. Number fourteen, Solid Snake. Wait, yes. wait, wait. Can we wait? Is Crash better Snake, than Spyro? Yeah. Is Crash better than that's not the question we're asking though. Is Crash more iconic than Spyro? Iconic. You think Crash is more oh. iconic? Yeah. Yeah, he was the PlayStation mascot. Yeah, and while. Crash yeah. at least kept going to some capacity, whereas Spyro really, really died, and then they tried to do it again, and it still died. Whereas Crash, I mean, Crash just had those reboots that came out that were all really good. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right, yeah. Alright, then we got Solid Snake at 14. Absolutely. Yeah. No question. Yeah. Steve, Steve from Minecraft is number 13, which I think is way too low for Minecraft. That is yeah. definitely too low. Yeah, it's got to be higher, unfortunately. But who thinks of who, wait? Who thinks of Steve like the character? Everyone. Yeah, like what the face of fuck? <laughs> yeah. You're the fifth dentist. How does it feel, Jackson? <laughs> yeah. Wait. What's like, the? I like yeah. it, Jackson. All the all the branding is him and the creeper. He's mostly. in, like he's the in two fucking most Smash iconic. Brothers. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely okay, Steve. Yeah. Even if it's just to represent the idea of Minecraft, like Minecraft is the yeah. second biggest game on the planet. Yeah, that's after what Tetris. That, see, that's know? what my issue was. Like, I was thinking, like, people wouldn't, most people, or I think a lot of people at least, wouldn't be like, oh, that's Steve. They'd just be like, that's Minecraft, man. Which, which I guess is still iconic at that point. Steve. Yeah. It still yeah. counts. No, yeah. I, I think Steve has yeah, enough global reach that definitely deserves to be on there. No, mm-hmm. my parents wouldn't know who Steve is, but they'd know who, like, Crash well, my parents wouldn't know who Nathan Drake is, so what do you want, you know? They might well, still, they might not know Steve's character's name, but they would still yeah. maybe, there's a good chance they would say, yeah, I've seen that thing before. It's from that craft game. Yeah. Uh, number yeah, 12 is Pikachu. <laughs> it's not that yeah, way that's too so low. fucking ridiculous. Far it's too number low. one. Way way be, Pikachu is too low. I think everyone in the world can agree Pikachu is number one. The face of the biggest franchise of all yep. time. Like, come on. There's there's yeah. like two or three I would say could fight for number one, and Pikachu is handily in there. Like, <clears throat> no question, easily. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything that could even compete with Pikachu. I would say Mario could compete with with Pikachu. Okay, so I'm going to continue and keep in mind now, every single name that I'm going to keep saying from now on is allegedly more popular than Pikachu. Uh, Arthur <laughs> Morgan from Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Hold on. Hold your breath. Drum roll. Number 10, Shadow Heart from Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> no. That Two Baldur's knows. Gate 3 characters in the top 20 iconic list is such a joke. I know, and one of them is above Pikachu. Look at chat. Scrim says, who the fuck is Shadowheart? Yeah, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, at least I know most people know the following ones. Uh, Kratos from God of War. That's number nine. Yeah. Master yeah, Chief yeah, from number eight. eight. Yeah, Master yeah, Chief. Those two are definitely Master top Chief, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Then it gets more sensical. Link is number seven, and yeah. Pac-Man yeah. is number six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about this one. Sackboy, number five? No. Absolutely that fucking that not. No, Jesus. Yeah, that, no. One, that one had me tight. Sackboy shouldn't even be in the top 20. Little Big Planet has been completely <laughs> off the fucking radar for 12 That's years now. Years. Yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah. No goddamn way. Okay, continued. Sonic, number four. Yes. I kind of hate to say it, but yeah. 100% yeah. deserved. Yeah. He's still extremely <laughs> relevant. Not yeah. deserved. I hate Sonic, but yeah. I mean, he may not be Age good, but he's absolutely relevant and iconic still. Yeah, and the right. movies number are good. What do you mean? The games, I, I mean. I haven't Num- seen the movies. I haven't seen the yeah. movies. Yeah. The, the Sonic Aww. movies are good. No, the Sonic movies are good, but the games are not. Yeah, yeah the it, games have been dog shit for a minute, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to Frontiers have a certain fine. type of autism to enjoy the Sonic games, I think. Sonic should be, like, top three, without a doubt, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Sonic 
Sonic well, is very number iconic. three is Agent 47 from Hitman. Which is no. fucking ridiculous. No. Yeah. God, no. I love Hitman, and even I think that's stupid. Jesus Christ, Agent no. 47 at number three most iconic no. game character of yeah. all time. No, is on Agent but I, I actually no. do think, yeah, I think he he belongs on the list. I really do. I think he would be on there. Yeah, yeah, he, he belongs on the he, list. He, he should he, be the 20th. Not number three. Place of Asterion at number 17. That's where he, he belongs. He, like, he, he should be lower end, lower end of the list. Like 2019, sure. But number three? God, no. Absolutely yeah, it's, not. It's outrageous. All right, number two. We're finally down to the uh, top two here. Number two is Mario. See, I could yeah. argue even Mario being number one. Like, Mario is Mario, you know? Well, no, Pikachu, yeah. Pikachu bigger than Mario for me. And Pikachu definitely be da, bigger da, 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 than Mario to me as well. And number one, Lara Croft, the Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't what know about that. Fucking turd. No. <laughs> Laura, I can also see on the top twenty, just because of in her heyday yeah. how big of a thing it was, but nowhere near the one spot. No, yeah, no, definitely not the number one spot. Everyone yeah. knows Tomb Raider, but number one over like so, Mario. Pikachu I will, Mario. I will just now yeah. give you two characters that I think absolutely would kick Nathan, Nathan Drake off the list. Number one, Ryu from Street Fighter. You're still fucking mad at Nathan Drake. <laughs> well, well, I'm also looking at the list of things that are not names on ago. here. There's no, there's no Street Fighter. There's That's no true. Resident Very Evil fair enough. whatsoever. There's, there's so many game franchises that are just not on here. So they could put Baldur's Gate three on here twice. I know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Ryu would probably beat Nathan Drake there. Easily. Leon from Resident Evil, maybe too. R Ryu would 100% beat Nathan Drake, and you cannot argue that. Street Fighter has been a massive franchise since 1992. Get out of here. I think you're looking at the true. wrong thing. I know. I think you're looking at the wrong thing, though. I think Nathan Drake stays. But we got to remove Asterion. We got to remove Shadowheart. Well, yeah, those are the yeah, yeah, probably those, Arthur those Morgan. Go no matter what. So those, those three are regardless. Arthur Morgan's my favorite yeah. video game character of all time, but I don't think he's on this list. I don't think he's iconic enough for that. Um, so if we remove those three, we have three more spots, and you can fit in whatever you said, whoever you said. And Ryu what, what, for sure. What did the other two go to? Ryu, and then the other two. I would say someone from Leon. Resident Evil, probably Leon. Yeah, yeah I think it'd have to be Leon. Leon's yeah. still super popular to this yeah. day. People are still making porn of Leon every fucking day. Yeah, and then can you the pick generic one... characters? Like, can I say a sim? Oh, you a know, you know who I would have character? to say. I don't uh, like it, but you know who I think I'd have hmm. to say just by numbers: Captain Price from Call of Duty. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Because yeah. not even the Call of Duty players think of Captain Price when they yeah, think it's of not Call like, of Duty. Iconic. Yeah, that's cool not character. Iconic. Is there any character that represents Call person. of Duty then? Because Call of Duty I would is say like Ghost, the biggest Ghost fucking over franchise. Captain yeah, maybe Price Ghost. in terms of iconic. Maybe yeah. Ghost. Maybe. Or someone yeah. from uh, Grand Theft Auto would be on there as well. Like uh, Trevor from Grand Theft Auto. Mm. I mean, Grand Theft Auto mm. 5 alone sold over like 120 million yeah. copies. Keep that yeah, in but mind. It, 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 Iconic means yeah, something different the online to me. It's like mode. everyone knows this character. This is so iconic. But that's a great example. Think about it. Grand Theft Auto V, just Grand Theft Auto V, sold three times as many copies as the entire Uncharted franchise. There has to be a character on there that represents Grand Theft Auto. It's so much bigger. No, no I don't think that does. Yeah, well, CJ may be like the chat is saying. CJ has way more. Yeah, yeah CJ. CJ would be a great choice. Characters CJ from Grand Theft Auto, yeah. Especially more than yeah, Arthur Morgan. CJ. Like, come on. No way. <laughs> Arthur Morgan's come my on. favorite video game character of all time. He deserves to be on a different list, but not this one. Sadly. No, yeah, no. Anyway, maybe Grand Theft Auto is far, far bigger than Red uh, Red Dead Redemption. It should have representation. It's not about Dead, bigness. It's sure. about, like, the... the uh, the iconic level of the character itself like with red dead redemption i would say um john marston more so than arthur morgan mm. even though arthur morgan is a better character and red dead redemption 2 i think sold more than red dead redemption 1 i still think john marston is more iconic because the, i got that another image is just like so i got another prevalent. character i think deserves there more than nathan drake because now i'm petty scorpion from mortal kombat mm. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can do this all day. There are 20, 30, 40 characters I think are more iconic than Nathan Drake. Like, I don't think he deserves yeah, to be I on there. I smell a all. little bit of nepotism here and advertising. Uh, so I'm on the BAFTA official page. 
This year alone, Tomb Raider 123 Remastered was released across multiple platforms and a highly anticipated <laughs> Netflix TV show Tomb Raider The Legend of Lara Croft <laughs> is scheduled for release later this year. Shelley Blonde, the original voice of Lara Croft, will also present an award at the 20th BAFTA Games Award on, ter- on Thursday, <gasps> 11th of April, in the official <laughs> ceremony. Wide open. So wait, they f- played favoritism here a little. Is this just an advertising for the Lara Croft Seems Netflix like it. stuff? I think they got the at lady least... presenting the award for her own franchise winning. Hmm. No Donkey Kong either. Just realized that. Oh, Donkey Kong for <laughs> Donkey oh, yeah. Kong should yeah. be on there a hundred percent. I think they got most of the people on here correct. At least fifteen of them, or maybe fourteen of them. Uh, so they're batting for about fifty percent average. Mm. But I think it's the order that's the big issue. Yeah. No Mega Man yeah, on it's there. The order. There's a. Like, Sackboy has no business being in the no. top five. This list, list should be like Pikachu, Mario, Link, and uh, Steve. As much Shit. as we don't want to say it, half the list should be Nintendo characters because Nintendo knows how to make iconic <laughs> characters. It's the truth. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's Just look at the really Smash Brothers yeah. roster. You have your whole lineup. There you go. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Kirby's anyway. another good one. Yeah, this was a dude. Oh, no Kirby. Yeah. No Kirby. Okay, yeah, no, this list is bullshit. Get Nathan Drake off there. I'm standing my ground. <laughs> God Kirby, <damn> it. <laughs> Donkey Kong. Kirby and Donkey Kong are slam dunk ads, and they should be on there as well, for sure. No question. I'd agree with that. Yeah. So Nathan mm-hmm. Drake doesn't deserve. Sorry, Jackson. You were wrong. I'm right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Just called it. Well, no, I you, told you. Nathan Drake is still like higher than at oh, least he's six definitely, of the people on this list. He's definitely iconic, but I don't think he's top 20 iconic. I think he's like top 50 iconic. Yeah, maybe. Oh, Doom Guy. Someone said Doom Guy. That's a good Doom one. Doom Guy's <laughs> another one I'd put higher than Nathan oh, Drake. Yeah. yeah. If you guys could veto or like force one of your favorite games in there, who would it be? Like if BAFTA Weinstein molested you a little and then let you pick <laughs> your pick and put it in the list. That's is that the only way I could get that done? Yeah, that's the like the worst reward ever. You go through that <laughs> only to have a video game character you like on a fucking list. <laughs> yeah, can I just okay, ask that and he instead? gives you a movie role in Moonfall 2. So which character oh, okay. do you put on the list? Mm. I put I put Statesman from City of Heroes on there. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty obscure. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I'll put uh the worms from Worms. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm gonna put Fun. Batman from Batman Arkham City. Oh well, yeah. ba- does that count? Oh yeah. That- I mean, yeah, I guess it does. Why wouldn't it? Yeah. He's there a video you go. game character. Why wouldn't He's a he? video game character. He's in a video game. I put Batman. He's been in video games since the SNES. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we're going by pure, like, game sales, isn't Tetris the most sold game of all time? Yes. <laughs> put a Tetris block on there, like the uh, think, straight block. Yeah, okay, but uh, Jackson, I didn't ask you wh- which big one you would put. I'm asking personal choice. This is your nepotism. Mm-hmm. Well, I love, I love Tetris. I actually do love Tetris. So huh. I, would, okay. I would choose the straight block from Tetris. Or actually, maybe right. the cube. Wait, which which Tetris block is the most iconic? Definitely the Probably. line. Yeah, the line. Line piece. Yeah, mm. line piece without a doubt. <clears throat> well, no, that's that, that's your favorite because it's got the most use and it, it gets rid of the most things. But like when you think of Tetris, it's probably like one of the like the um the L's or the zigzag ones because they're the most unique. Mm. Mm. You might be overthinking iconic to mean unique <laughs> rather than just what everyone knows. Yeah, yeah iconic maybe. is more like yeah. representative. Of something so if we right, if I'll we go, go by the I'll chart, I, I pulled up the list of best selling video games here. By the way, Grand Theft Auto Five, I underestimated. It's almost at two hundred million copies sold, which is just unbelievable. That is unbelievable. If we go by the chart, we need to add the following franchises to the list. We need a character from Wii Sports. We need a character from PUBG. (laughs) We need a character from Overwatch. We need the guy from The Witcher. What's his name? The main guy? 
Geralt. Because yeah, and oh. finally, the most surprising, we need a character from Human Fall Flat. Whoa, oh, that yeah. is surprising. That has sold fifty million copies. What, what the fuck? Yeah, that's really might weird. Might as well to me. throw in a hell diver then. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, um, Wii Sports, yeah. like, uh, what are they called? Mies? Mies might be on the list. Yeah, I, I would say too broad. Um, I yeah. would, I would also argue an Animal Crossing character should be on there, like Tom Nook. Agreed. Animal yeah. Crossing oh, yeah. should also probably be there. Yeah, I'm scrolling through this list, and there's not a lot of Uncharted. Oh man! See, that's the. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm just, I'm making jokes. I don't actually care. Um, but yeah, it it is honestly just mostly <laughs> Nintendo stuff on this list. It's a lot of Nintendo shit. Yeah, yeah. They do have. Bangers. All right, that's gonna do it. Let's do, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know what your pick for the most iconic selection for this list would be. Did we miss any? Uh, yeah, what's I don't your think top we did. three? We, we, we got them all. Yeah, let us know. Uh, Patreon.com yeah. slash the official podcast for, for early access to content like Red Thread and this. Um, yeah, that's criminally stupid's coming back soon. Kara and myself mm-hmm. are recording an episode this week, so that'll be back soon. Uh, different different kind of vibe different format kind of so keep an eye out for that uh, um other than that we'll see you next time bye Bye-bye. bye bye